Maximus is probably most powerful single stock FL Studio plugin. Let's listen why. This is before. And after. Amazing not only because it's Max, but I'm Max. I run FLTips.com, a place where dreams come true. Let's explore what Maximus is capable of. So Maximus is practically a compressor, just like Fruity Limiter. So to understand Maximus, first you need to understand the whole concept of compression. I made a full video about that. We covered Fruity Limiter, which is a limiter and compressor itself. And it's important because Maximus is actually multiband compressor. And that's the second level of compression. Please don't try to learn mastering before you learn basics of production. We've got a collection of courses uncovering every single topic you need to know. But multiband means that we just split the frequency range of your audio and compress each band, so each frequency range individually. And that's exactly why you'll see here low, mid, high and master, which is everything basically. If you go here to bands, you will see what frequency ranges we are actually covering with each compressor, because every single color here is a compressor. And actually this window right here is actually much easier to understand and learn compression than threshold and knee ratio and stuff like this. Let me show you why. In compressor you have threshold and ratio, which are two most important knobs, of course, in a compressor. Then you have some knee attack and release. That's already something a little bit different. The audio you input, goes in this angle naturally. So if we have it like this, we technically should not affect any audio. But because as you can see, the audio here gets into our horizontal lane, that means we are limiting it. So it's exactly working like this ceiling here. So it's infinite compression. And now if we take it all the way up, we'll be letting the audio through all the way up. See, we are not affecting it in any way. And now if we bring it down a little bit, we are already starting to compress it because the audio is getting up to the point where we are breaking the line here. And now this is our ratio of our compressor. So now, for example, we can take the middle dot down and now take the other dot down and we will just that way lower the limiter threshold. So this dot, if we keep it on the line here, will be our second most important knob in a compressor threshold, of course, threshold. So here we decide at which point we want the compressor to start triggering. You can see the hint bar saying here's zero dB threshold, here's minus three dB threshold, and here's minus 11 dB threshold. So if you actually understand compression, you will know that this is just the same thing as we can see here in the hint bar telling us about the compressor threshold. So now if I do this, there's no compression applied. We don't affect the highlighted line, which indicates our audio. And if I take it like here, and as you can see, our audio doesn't hit minus three now. And previously, it was up to plus six, basically. Very easy. Now we have also ability to bend it. It will create our knee of our compressor, basically. So how fast it actually starts compressing. By default, it's very harsh, of course. So that's the most important window on Maximus. Now you can do weird stuff. If you do this, for example, you can see that you will start compressing the audio right away when it just comes through the Maximus. Or if you go up like that right away, your audio will be boosted up and limited at the same time to zero dB. Take a look at this. So we are all the time having our audio at zero dB. That's why Maximus is so powerful. You can make very weird shapes. For example, do something like this by bending it up. You are increasing the audio, so it's expansion. And if you take it down, downward expansion. I have a full video about this, actually. There's so many ways you can use it really, really nicely in your productions. Or you can even make another dot and make two kind of ratios. So when the audio hits minus 11 dB, it starts very subtle compression. But if it hits minus three, then it starts a little bit harsher compression or even limiting like this. The same thing we could also do in compressor, basically, because we have a limiting knob 
and compressor knob, right? Also, you can, for example, make gate effect. There are many use cases for that. I covered it in another video. The dots here work exactly the same as in automations, for example. If you don't hold Alt, it will stick to the grid. If you hold Alt, it won't stick to the grid. Also, you can right-click, delete the points. And now, actually, there's mapping options where you can make yourself some presets. Like, this is some preset that comes up with Maximus. You can also save your own, of course, you can reset. And here you have scale levels. So basically the same thing you will see in Velocity and many, many other FL Studio tools. To be real, I've never thought I would use those. You can smooth all points. You can even analyze audio file. If you take some vocal sample, let's say. I have no idea why we would ever need to use this thing. Now here we can turn off the editing. Here we can turn off the snapping to grid, of course. And now we were all the time in the master band. If you go to high, mid, low, everything will start making sense because of exactly that. You remember those bands here. That means with this compressor, we are affecting only this band. On the bottom, you can solo it to hear what actually you're doing. slightly compressing the low end. Now we can go to mids. Now we are affecting only the snare in the mids and now highs. For example, we apply slight compression just on the highs. As you can see, we are breaking the 45 degree angle by this ratio here. Now, if you go to master, you can see that already audio is a little bit quieter because we compress the highs, mids and lows a little bit. Let's hear without anything we've done. There is something happening, definitely, you can hear that. Not changing too much for now. Here you can turn off the compressor so it's not affecting it in any way. Or here you can mute the whole band. So if you unsolo, if you go to bands, you can see it's turned off. And if we turn it off, now lows are taken over by mids band. So we have only two band compressor right now. Now the knobs here are quite important. Let's say you have really low audio coming into your Maximus. You can barely see the audio there and you cannot really make any changes because it's like it's fragile on the bottom. You can extend the Maximus like this. It might help in some way. However, what you can do right now is go to pre-gain. And what this will do is basically just turn up the gain. As you can see, we're turning it up. Now to not boost only lows, we should also boost every band like this. However, the master now is very loud. That's why you can take it down on the master because we don't need that much of audio coming into our master, but I want a lot of control in my highs, for example, right? Now, there's a post gain as well, and this one you'll be actually using very, very often. If we bring it up now, it will keep the compression ratio and actually hold audio and just make up gain after that. That's why it's called makeup gain. I guess it's pretty obvious. Next one is saturation. And most of you might know it as soft clipper. And that's exactly what you'll also find in Fruity Limiter. Here, the saturation knob does exactly the same, but in Maximus, we also have opportunity to set the ceiling of how loud our audio can go through. For example, we don't want it to go more than minus two dB. And threshold is the amount of saturation. Let's say we want just a little bit of saturation, let's say 10%, but it's not doing anything because we are not hitting the threshold. And now we take the threshold down. It's very, very useful. I will show you in a second. Here we have the mono and stereo separation mode. On the right, you merge it. On the left, you make it a little bit more stereo. It works for highs, mid and low separately. We'll get into it really soon in the examples. Now here we have 
invisible but very important drop down menu with options where we can set the maximus to oversample mode, which needs a video on its own. It's basically just making it a little bit more high quality and of course CPU heavy, but it doesn't mean that you will hear any difference. There are some use cases for that, but we'll talk about it in another video. Master mid mode is super handy. Look at this. If I turn it on and go to bands, now we have only mid band turned on, but listen. We still hear everything. What's happening, we can actually take our band like that. So we, let's say, aim only between 1 and 2K. And now if we go to mid compressor, you will see... Not really audible, but what's happening is we take only these frequencies between 1 and 2K as the trigger for our compressor. So whenever these frequencies right here hit the compressor, let's say we limit it, we turn down audio of the whole master volume, not only this band, but everything. This comes in handy when, for example, the async vocals. I'll show it to you later in the examples. Now let's turn it off and bring it back. Next one is, I don't think, useful now legacy mode of linear phase. And then we have minus 0.2 dB of safety, basically. So, so we can see now we don't have the safety mode. And if we turn it on, we have the safety mode. So basically we're just keeping a little bit of headroom. I'm not sure why it's there by default. Oh, by the way, did you know that we are now sponsored by... Yeah. Easy. FLTips.com, the best online music production courses on the internet. Everything we gathered throughout years of experience. We're so sure you're gonna love it that you get 100% money back guarantee on every single product. Check it out, links in the description. Now later you have just some fancy stuff that is just about visuals, but I think the envelope section here is the funniest one. I, I don't think I've ever seen something like this. Look at this. Now the attack works exactly the same as in every single compressor, but with this thing and many people would just get frustrated because of that, but they don't know that on the master the attack knob actually increases the look ahead. So you're not really going to get this kind of effect you want. But of course, on, for example, the high band, it does work as you want the attack to work. And then of course the release and sustain. But here we are actually getting to a very funny thing. If you ever wondered why there's this attack and a couple of numbers right to it, there's actually two ways of release that Maximus provides you. For example, release first, has this kind of shape like that, accelerating. But if you take it down and turn on the release second up, look at the difference. It's like inverted Q curve. Here we turn off the compressor faster and here we keep the compressor on a little bit longer. And funny thing is that you can actually use them both at the same time. I've never, <laughs> I honestly never found it useful. Uh, I don't think anybody will. If you did, let me know. Now here you have a couple of cures. Let's see what they do. If we go to one, we have this kind of cure. And if we go to eight, it's a little bit more sustained kind of. And the same thing comes with the second release knob. If we take the second down and take the first up or take it down, it just smooths out the curve. And now of course here you have sustain. I don't know if you ever want to make it longer than like 10 milliseconds. Sometimes, of course, yes. And now let's use the second release, actually. It looks like this. And now really powerful feature here is the RMS switch. If you turn it on to RMS, instead of the peak audio signal as a trigger, it takes the average signal of last 100 to 300 milliseconds or so. It just allows you to make a lot smoother compression, something you don't have in Fruity Limiter. Now it works really nicely on vocals. This is a vocal from our upcoming vocal sample pack. Why would I keep on waiting when your love is loveless? Why would I seek? As you can see, we really do it smoothly. If we do it in peak mode. Why would I keep on waiting? How harsh that is. Really cool feature. Now I should not be showing those vocals. They are coming out in a couple of days. There's this 
LMH delay, which is a look ahead delay. And now on the master, it works together with attack. If we turn up the attack, it also turns on the look ahead. But what it does is actually just compressing before the signal hits. So it needs to delay the plugin. So you will introduce some latency, which won't help with inter sample picking for sure. There's a different feature that does that. Look ahead delay just works exactly like you will see here. So it actually starts working a little bit earlier. That's look ahead. Remember that it actually turns it on for low, mids and highs. And low, mids and highs mix. Oh man, this is sauce. What this does is just blending the after compression signal with the complete dry signal. It works pretty nicely if you compress every band like very, very harshly. And now bring up the post gain in each. And now take down the mix. It allows you to make really nice parallel compression inside of Maximus. The nice thing is that you should not do it on the mixer right here, because it just will introduce phasing issues like that completely wrong if you take it down here. Everything stays really nicely in phase, nothing to worry about. Now here we have the ability to change where the bands actually start. That's very important because you always want to solo each band and listen where it actually starts. For example, this is too much. This is a quite perfect and the same you do with the low end depending on if you want to catch a little bit more bass or just stay in the very, very sub frequencies. And before we get into use cases, here's a very, very important button, linear phase, which won't allow any intersample peaks through the ceiling that you set, for example, here. And to understand why it's important, let's get into it. So Maximus you usually use on your master, it's a maximizer, but there are many, many use cases for that other than on your final mastering chain. For example, DSing. Now here we have a lot of presets and you need to go through them yourself. There are many, many cool ones. We want to make de narrow band or split band. You're some kind of stupid. So we have this phrase with a lot of S. Instead of applying just the S, you need to make sure you solo the mid band kind of stupid. and search for just the S sound that your singer is having. It's about right for this vocalist. And now you need to, of course, adjust the compressor ratio and threshold. You're some kind of stupid. So without it. You're some kind of stupid. With. You're some kind of stupid. Again, we are triggering the whole master, but with just the S sound of those vocals. Very, very handy thing. Other thing you'll use Maximus on are groups of instruments. And it can be a group, it can be, as I said, master already. So it can be, for example, kick and bass. However, I think the most obvious use case uh, we'll see and hear on the master, it's a quick track I made only using our Memoriam Serum preset pack. Cool loop, the sounds obviously are amazing. You get over 100 pieces like that. Plus MIDI song starters, that's my go-to pack since we made this. I really wish I had it a couple of years ago. However, the whole loop is just all over the place. Of course, all of those samples come in our Ultimate Future Bass Pack. First of all, in Maximus, when you load it on top of your group of instruments or your master track, first of all, I do go into low end and make really subtle shape about like this and try to lower the dynamic range between the kick and the bass that hits. Let's solo it. So you can see we don't need to hit the bass, but we want to hit the kick. So we adjust the threshold with this dot. much, much better. It just sounds a little bit more squashed. And now as you can see with the Call of Duty hit mark, we are hitting it minus four dB. So we can actually boost the gain up about three or four dB to make it up. And now we do the same thing with mids. And the secret is that there's no secret. And making great music is just about having great sounds 
and having a great knowledge, which we provide you with both of those. We just try to compress it a little bit so it's not that cutting through everything. As you can see, we don't want to catch the base. I mean, you can catch the base, but the thing is we just want to take care of the peaks, not the overall color and balance of the truck. That's quite perfect. We don't want more than like four 3 dB of reduction. Same thing we do with highs. It's very important because highs are really hurting your ears. And when putting Maximus on a group of instruments, you don't want anybody to bleed from the ears. So just a little bit like that. And now we can again, of course, boost the gain up. With the highs and lows, you can go a little bit higher with the post gain, especially if your mix is tonally balanced already. We'll boost it up on the mids as well a little bit. Now on the master track, we can just a little bit compress it overall again after everything. And now we finally can use the stereo separation knob. In the highs, we can make it a little bit more separated, about 20% in the mids, like five, nine, eight, something like this, maybe 10. On the lows, we can merge it. If you already have pretty well mixed sounds in terms of stereo and mono compatibility, you don't really have to do it. It's not the best idea to do it like this on the master. Better use one of our stereo enhancing presets from our light version of our Patcher preset pack. Now, everything is fine now. Uh, I don't want to check any of the envelopes in here. Everything looks good. The threshold you set to 1% on either of both sides. You need to try what works best for your mix. After that, we want to take the ceiling down to minus one dB always, and you can turn off the compressor safety if you've done that. But what we are going to do is turn on the linear phase, very important. I also forgot to tell you about the low cut. It's very handy to put it up to 30 Hertz, so you have a little bit more headroom to boost your volume. Now, as we set the ceiling, we can use now the post gain on the master track to boost the volume up until we hear some distortion going on. As you can see, we're getting much lower peak volume and we are actually louder. Multiband compressor, soft clipping here, really precise way of setting up the ratio and threshold for the compressors for each band. Really nice, soft clipping, crispy, working in linear phase. What would you want more out of Maximus? I think I know what. There's this Sound Goodizer VST in FL Studio. Smarty Pants producers say to not use it. I've seen a lot of major producers use it. And actually what Soundgodizer is, is a preset inside of Maximus. You can use the mix knob here. A lot of cool presets inside of here. I hope you got a lot of value from this video. Make sure to leave a like for YouTube algorithm. And I'm always, always reading all of your comments. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want me to make a video on some topic, let me know down in the comments. And of course, subscribe to not miss out when it's coming out. See you in the next video.